So, Dr. Amada, please uh, share your slide with us. Um, okay, thank you so much. Uh, can you um, see my slides? Yes. Okay. And I can hear you. Okay, right. Thank you. So, as you already know by now, my name is Dr. Abdul Momin and I am going to present this topic uh, environmental friendly and sustainable approaches for animal protein intake in a Pakistani perspective so first of all starting with the features and needs of animal proteins so as we know that uh, primarily we can divide protein on the basis of sources into two types so on one side we have plant pro plant based proteins and on the other side we have animal based proteins so when we talk about um, uh, the animal uh, based proteins um, so uh, they are actually also considered to be the complete proteins because uh, they provide us with all the essential um, amino acids and uh, these animal based proteins uh, these have the highest biological values um, so which render them um, to be very good for human health so the major sources of animal proteins include egg uh, then uh, meat in the form of either fish or poultry uh, mutton or beef and then milk also is a form of animal protein uh, then if we talk about the functions of uh, proteins they are involved in synthesis of various hormones enzymes and other substances they are also required for the growth in maintenance so they have um, they are known to play a very important role in the growth and development of children as well uh, then they have the proteins have got some structural roles along with the balance of body fluids um, we have just witnessed um, a pandemic in the form of COVID-19 and uh, we know that immunity had a very important role in that so proteins um, as uh, nutrients play a very important role in uh, determining the overall immunity of an individual as well uh, then along with that proteins are also uh, one of the fuel for the body so we know that our body primarily uh, a human body primarily relies on carbohydrates for the provision of energy uh, then comes the role of fats and then if the fats are also depleted then proteins are broken down by the body to produce energy and we uh, get 4 calories per gram of protein um, here in Pakistan the situation is that um, the requirement for protein is sorry uh, the requirement for protein is 102.7 grams per head per day uh, while the available protein is 69.61 grams per head per day uh, which means that if we subtract 69.61 from 102.7 it uh, brings us to a difference of 33.09 grams which is actually the gap in uh, the protein uh, requirement and the actual protein intake so which means that our population is consuming lesser protein than its requirements now uh, if we come to the problems about the intake of animal proteins um, as my colleague has already pointed out rightly that uh, a higher intake of animal proteins is associated with various issues various health issues like hypertension and cardiovascular diseases uh, then there is a greater risk of early death uh, among those who are um, very fond of eating animal lots of animal proteins uh, then consumption of animal protein in larger amounts also leads to increased risk of certain types of cancers then uh, again this uh, point has been highlighted by uh, the previous presenter that animal protein lacks fiber uh, too much consumption of animal protein can also deteriorate bone health and it has also got big environmental footprints um, animal protein uh, compared to the plant protein 
Um, so the next slide talks about the proposal for the sustainable approaches for animal proteins intake. So what we can do is we can invest in agriculture and livestock development because obviously um, all types of animal protein is dependent on the livestock. Then we can or we should also focus on one health as um, it has been suggested by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, CDC USA um, then in a country like Pakistan there should probably be more subsidies on animal sources of protein uh, because um, um, animal sources of protein are actually quite expensive to be bought and consumed um, on regular basis um, plus um, by and large we are a meat lover nation so there is also a need to decrease the overconsumption of animal proteins because I have already mentioned in my previous slide uh, the demerits or the drawbacks of consuming um, a lot of animal proteins. Uh, well, what could be the benefits of these proposed approaches from the point of view of uh, environment? consumer need and taste preference so if we are able to uh, implement these approaches mentioned in the previous slide then more people will be able to afford animal protein who currently cannot buy because of their uh, affordability issues then more more people will be able to um, probably overcome problems such as iron deficiency because we know that uh, again iron uh, in terms of its sources can be divided into two types one is the heme iron which comes primarily from animal sources and the other one is non heme iron which comes from plant sources and when we talk about um, the heme iron its absorption is approximately 30 percent um, uh, around 20 to 30 percent and when we talk about non-heme iron the absorption is only 3 to 8 percent so which means that if we consume iron from animal sources uh, it is absorbed more in our body and in a country like Pakistan where approximately 51 percent or half of the uh, women are anemic uh, this is a very important point to be considered uh, then uh, because of this protein deficiency could be significantly reduced again in Pakistan unfortunately stunting uh, among children um, is on a higher side uh, there are many problems associated with growth and development of children um, infant mortality rate is also quite high in Pakistan and one of the reasons uh, is uh, malnutrition uh, one of the major reasons is malnutrition so again protein deficiency uh, leading to malnutrition could be overcome because of this and uh, lastly if we decrease over consumption of animal proteins that is also necessary so we could also end up uh, decreasing the burden of non-communicable diseases because unfortunately Pakistan is one of those few countries um, in the world where there is triple burden of malnutrition so on one side we have um, uh, you know uh, uh, micronutrient deficiencies also known as hidden hunger uh, then we have uh, on the other side um, we have non-communicable uh, diseases uh, leading to malnutrition then um, we also have um, the problem of communicable diseases so uh, unfortunately and the situation is not very good in terms of nutrition or triple burden of disease or triple burden of malnutrition as well um, because if we talk about triple burden of malnutrition we have on one side children dying of malnutrition undernutrition and on the other side uh, the most recently conducted national nutrition survey tells us that we have 9.5 percent obese children as well so we have overnutrition undernutrition and micronutrient deficiencies at the same time similarly triple burden of disease uh, like non-communicable diseases communicable diseases uh, along with the road traffic accidents as well uh, then the profitability of the proposed approaches so um, 
if we are able to uh, uh, you know implement these proposed approaches we could have sustainable economic growth reduced environmental issues which is uh, such a huge problem uh, worldwide these days and uh, again we could earn a better economic return um, as we are primarily an agriculture and livestock based uh, economy um this is the last slide where i have discussed some merits and demerits merits of the proposed approaches so merits obviously include improved protein and heme iron intake uh, enhanced plant animal and human health and better affordability so that people will be able to consume um, animal protein and reduce the protein deficiency demerits obviously include environmental impact because as i have already mentioned um, animal protein consumption has bigger environmental footprints compared to plant protein intake then um, obviously it is also associated with increased carbon emissions and um, lastly there is an increased risk of non communicable diseases when you consume more animal protein so uh, this is it from my side uh, thank you so much uh, if you have any uh, comments please do share thank you thank you very much so uh, uh, as the doctor Amrada said uh, uh, the, uh, if uh, there are uh, any uh, comments or uh, question please Maybe I can uh, ask one question to Dr. Yeah. Momin. Yeah, please. So, uh, yeah, as you explained that um, Pakistan, uh, one of the issue now in Pakistan is that um, the requirements of protein is not sufficient. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you also propose to reduce the world consumptions of animal protein. But so one is lack, but yes. another one is to reduce the world yeah. consumption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very, well, uh, very valid question. So actually, I have proposed to reduce the uh, overconsumption of animal protein because unfortunately we are not into um, a lot of eating plant-based proteins. So what I would recommend is uh, to make people aware uh, regarding the uh, regarding uh, uh, the consumption of plant-based proteins um, as well because as I mentioned in my presentation that primarily we are a meat loving nation so um, people who consume protein they are uh, they are a lot more into animal protein and um, the consumption of plant protein is very less so we could uh, probably advocate more about the consumption of plant based proteins um, which will be good for the environment as well which will be good for the overcoming of protein deficiency yes i i know i can understand that animal protein is a complete protein but there are ways uh, by which you can also make your plant proteins into complete proteins as well for example there is this technique called um, protein complementing um, by which if you for example if you consume um, cereal along with the legumes so that protein also becomes a complete protein so for example if you are going to eat rice you can combine it with some legume like peas so it eventually becomes a complete protein so these are the sort of techniques which you uh, need to um, make people learn uh, so that they can also start consuming more plant-based protein and on one side and they can overcome the overall protein deficiency and on the other side um, they are also not over consuming animal based protein.